As the 2024 election approaches, a critical issue is emerging from the shadows. The unchecked health risks of wireless radiation, which have been ignored for decades due to regulatory capture within key government agencies. This sleeper issue, brought into the spotlight by the unexpected alliance between Donald Trump and Robert F. Kennedy Jr., could have profound implications for both public health and democratic governance. While healthcare, the economy, and other high-profile topics dominate the headlines, the dangers of wireless radiation have been downplayed, posing a serious threat to public health. These dangers include potential links between radio frequency radiation from cell phones and cancer, a concern that was thrust into the limelight when the Biden administration, with Kamala Harris playing a pivotal role, halted critical research into the subject. This research, conducted by the National Toxicology Program, had uncovered troubling evidence linking RF radiation to glioblastoma, the same cancer that claimed the life of Bo Biden, the president's son. This article delves deep into the ramifications of regulatory capture, explores how the wireless industry has evaded meaningful oversight, and highlights why the Trump-Kennedy collaboration may represent the best opportunity to address this growing public health crisis. Outdated FCC Guidelines, a public health crisis in the making. The Federal Communications Commission's guidelines on RF radiation, established in 1996, are woefully out of date. These guidelines were designed around the assumption that only thermal effects, the heating of tissue caused by RF exposure, could pose a risk to human health. However, in the decades since, a substantial body of scientific research has demonstrated that non-thermal effects, such as DNA damage, oxidative stress, and disruption of cellular communication, are significant health risks. Despite these findings, the FCC has refused to update its standards, leaving millions at risk. This failure is no accident. The FCC has been heavily influenced by industry insiders and corporate lobbyists, a situation known as regulatory capture. During the Obama-Biden administration, Tom Wheeler, a former head of the wireless industry, was appointed to lead the FCC. His leadership favored corporate profits over public safety, allowing telecom giants to continue expanding without sufficient oversight or public health protections. Even under Trump's first term, the FCC continued to operate in the interests of corporate players, with Ajit Pai, a former Verizon lawyer, overseeing the commission. Like Wheeler before him, Pai ignored the mounting calls for updated guidelines to protect Americans from the dangers of wireless radiation. Clear evidence linking wireless radiation to cancer. The potential health risks of wireless radiation are not speculative. Several landmark studies have provided clear evidence of the dangers posed by prolonged exposure to RF radiation, particularly from cell phones. Some of the most notable studies include the National Toxicology Program study, which found that male rats exposed to RF radiation developed glioblastoma and schwannomas, types of tumors that are deadly. The Ramazzini Institute study, which corroborated the NTP's findings, linking RF radiation to cancer in rats. The Bioinitiative Report, which compiled over 3,800 peer-reviewed studies on the biological effects of RF radiation, highlighting risks such as cancer, neurological disorders, and hormonal imbalances. Despite these significant findings, the FCC continues to ignore the evidence, insisting that only thermal effects are relevant. This stance has left millions of Americans, especially children, at risk. Children, with their developing brains and bodies, are far more vulnerable to the effects of RF radiation than adults, yet the agency refuses to act. Kamala Harris and the halt of critical NTP research. Perhaps the most egregious example of regulatory capture occurred under the Biden-Harris administration, which allowed the NTP's wireless radiation research to be abruptly halted. This research, which had provided some of the clearest evidence to date of the link between RF radiation and cancer, was discontinued, leaving families across the nation without crucial information that could protect their health. 
Kamala Harris, who plays a central role in shaping public health policy, permitted the shutdown of this critical research. The decision to divert funds away from the NTP's wireless radiation studies toward other priorities, including military spending, represents a profound failure to safeguard public health. This cancellation is especially troubling given the personal connection between Biden and the issue. Beau Biden, the president's son, died of glioblastoma, the very same cancer that the NTP linked to RF radiation exposure in its study. While no official link between cell phone radiation and Beau Biden's cancer has been established, the scientific evidence pointing to RF radiation as a brain tumor risk factor is compelling. The halt of the NTP research is just one part of a much larger problem. For decades, the FCC and other government agencies tasked with protecting public health have been subject to regulatory capture. Corporate interests have consistently trumped public safety, leading to policies that prioritize profits over the well-being of millions. The revolving door between government and industry has allowed telecommunications companies to avoid meaningful regulation, continuing to expose Americans to potentially dangerous levels of RF radiation. The decision to halt critical research and rely on outdated FCC guidelines isn't simply a matter of oversight. It is a deliberate choice to favor industry over people's health. Drain the Swamp 2.0 Trump and RFK Jr. to address regulatory capture. During his first term, Trump made several missteps in his attempts to drain the swamp. By appointing figures with deep ties to the industries they were meant to regulate, such as Ajit Pai at the FCC, Trump inadvertently perpetuated corporate influence within government agencies. However, Trump's willingness to acknowledge these mistakes sets him apart from other politicians. In recent statements, Trump has admitted that he underestimated the extent of the problem and placed too much trust in lobbyists and business interests when appointing key figures. Now, with RFK Jr. by his side, Trump is making a clear commitment to address these issues head on. RFK Jr., a long-standing advocate for public health and environmental protections, has spent decades fighting corporate influence within government. His successful legal battles against agencies such as the FDA, CDC, NIH, and USDA demonstrate his effectiveness in holding regulators accountable. In 2021, RFK Jr. achieved a major victory when he forced the FCC to reconsider its outdated RF radiation safety guidelines. Now, as Trump's ally, RFK Jr. is well positioned to help bring about real change. RFK Jr.'s legal expertise and his proven track record of holding regulatory agencies accountable make him the ideal partner for Trump in the fight to reform the FCC. Together, they have a real opportunity to update RF radiation guidelines. The FCC guidelines must be revised to reflect the latest scientific understanding of non-thermal effects. This will protect Americans from the long-term health risks of wireless radiation. Restarting NTP research is also crucial. The NTP's wireless radiation research is vital for understanding the full scope of health risks posed by RF radiation. Reinstating this research will give the public the information they need to make informed decisions. By appointing individuals committed to public health rather than industry profits, Trump and RFK Jr. can help end the cycle of regulatory capture that has plagued government agencies for decades. The Trump-RFK Jr. alliance is significant not just for its focus on public health, but also for its bipartisan nature. In a time of deep political polarization, this partnership represents a rare moment of unity between a Republican and a Democrat to address an issue that affects all Americans, regardless of political affiliation. This is more than a political campaign. It is a movement to restore trust in government and to protect the health of future generations. By prioritizing public health over corporate profits, Trump and RFK Jr. are setting a new standard for leadership. At its core, 
The issue of regulatory capture represents a profound threat to democracy. When corporate interests control government agencies, public trust in democratic institutions erodes. By tackling this issue directly, Trump and RFK Jr. have the potential to restore faith in government. The failure of the current administration to address regulatory capture and their decision to halt critical research into wireless radiation risks has left millions vulnerable to serious health risks. In contrast, Trump and RFK Jr. offer a vision of government that works for the people, not corporations. In the upcoming 2024 election, the alliance between Donald Trump and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. will focus on one of the most important sleeper issues of modern times, the unchecked health risks of wireless radiation and the problem of regulatory capture. Their bipartisan partnership represents a bold step toward reforming the FCC, restarting essential NTP research, and safeguarding the health of millions of Americans. This time, Trump is not alone. With RFK Jr. by his side, draining the swamp becomes not just a promise, but a tangible goal. Together, they have the potential to reshape government agencies to serve the interests of the people rather than corporate power. This fight is about more than just the 2024 election. It's about the future of public health and the integrity of democracy.